Vivo are well established as being one of the best in the business when it comes to producing premium mid-range smartphones at very good price points and this new Vivo V23 5G takes things to the next level. Starting at less than $400 in the global market, the V23 is littered with features and screams innovation. I mean, this phone can actually change color when under ultraviolet light. Other than its chameleon characteristics, the Vivo V23 houses two selfie cameras, a 50 megapixel main selfie sensor and an eight megapixel ultra wide selfie lens. And get this, it has two dual tone selfie LED lights hidden in the top bezel just above its flat 90 hertz AMOLED display. That flat display translates into a boxy design thanks to a squared off aluminum frame wrapping around the device. In the box we are treated to a silicon case, wired earphones, a wired earphone adapter, a charging cable and a 44 watt flash charger. This is Tech Nick and this is my unboxing and review of the Vivo V23 5G. The Vivo V23 comes in two main colors, one being Stardust Black that actually has a blue hue infused in it and another one called Sunshine Gold, which I have with me here today. Both colors are made with a fluorite anti-glare glass backplates, which have a layer of fine full crystals and can color shift at different angles. Not to mention they have a matte finish for a softer fingerprint proof touch. But only the Sunshine Gold color variant packs in the color change technology that can automatically change color when exposed to ultraviolet light for more than 30 seconds. It has a gold-like sunshine look before the UV light hits it and a rich greeny blue look after getting hit by UV light. This becomes possible with chemical change when getting hit by light of certain wavelengths. And by the way, of course, sunlight works too. The color changing backplate is pretty cool, but I've got to say that the gold finish is my preference over here it looks really neat and classy and I really do like the fact that it can also shift color when light hits your phone at different angles. Inside the device we are kitted with a 4200 milliamp hour battery with 44 watt flash wire charging, a MediaTek Dimensity 925G chipset, LPDDR4X RAM and UFS 2.2 storage. The front display is protected by Scott Sensation up front glass which is actually pretty reliable and of course that Fluorite AG glass battery. And the middle of the two glass sheets sits an aerospace aluminum frame. At the back we are kitted with an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor, a 64 megapixel isocell GW1 main sensor and a 2 megapixel macro camera. The 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor takes a more than decent shot thanks to AI. 64 megapixel main looks great, binning it down to 16 looks even better at 4 to 1 bin. You can also use that bin shot to do 2 times digital zoom or 5 times and the max is 10 times which actually still looks pretty decent if you ask me in terms of digital zoom. Getting up close and personal, you can take a pretty decent macro shot thanks to that two megapixel macro sensor. And we can also take pretty decent, actually with almost no edge detection, bokeh portrait shots here too. We do have 1080p 30fps ultra wide. This is the max resolution and frames per second when recording using the ultra wide camera. We do have 1080p 60fps when using the main camera, it looks more than decent if you ask me. And we do also have 4K 30 FPS video recording, though 4K is capped at 30 FPS and cannot go up to 60 FPS. Recording with the low frame rates at night definitely helps out in terms of lighting situations, as you can see over here. 1080p 60 at night looks okay. It's a bit darker, obviously, due to 60 frames per second. A lot more granules over here since things aren't as bright. The exposure is not quite as high due to the higher frames per second counts. But 1080 1080p at 30 FPS ultra wide video at night is a big no no. I've never quite seen quality as bad when recording using the ultra wide sensor, but taking photos with the ultra wide sensor at night doesn't look too bad for a mid ranger over here. And taking main shots at night looks actually pretty impressive, even with night mode on. We can also turn night mode off and then enable it at two times zoom, which does a fairly decent job by brightening the shot up, but it kind of lacks in detail. Same thing can be said with five times zoom, though it looks a bit better if you ask me. 10 times zoom being the max for night mode on as well, and also just the max zoom in general. The triple camera setup is a bit of a mixed bag, I guess you could say, but it actually kind of exceeds my expectations for a phone at this price point. 
We do have a boxy design here thanks to the flat aerospace aluminum edges which look absolutely phenomenal and by the way the pro model actually has a plastic frame so it's interesting to see such quality materials being put into the vanilla version. We have a power button on the right hand side as well as a non-split volume rocker at the bottom we do have a dual sim 5g standby tray there is a water resistant seal but unfortunately no expandable storage options we have a usb port at the bottom as well as a single bottom firing speaker unfortunately no dual speakers here and at the top of the display underneath the earpiece sits two more than capable selfie cameras one of them being an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor and the other one being a 50 megapixel custom main sensor but this star of the show here is the two dual tone dual LED selfie flashlights which Vivo like to call spotlights. The 50 megapixel shot at native 50 megapixel looks absolutely phenomenal, bin dance 12.5 looks even better, bokeh portrait looks the best that I've ever seen, ultra wide selfie doesn't look too bad I mean it's only an 8 megapixel selfie sensor but having an extra camera as an ultra wide sensor for selfies is just absolutely awesome. Yo what's up guys this is Technic recording a 4K 30 FPS, yes, you heard that right. 4K selfie video on the brand new Vivo V23 5G. Let me know what you guys think of the audio as well as the video quality when recording in a well-lit situation. 4K selfies are awesome, but you can also do 1080p 60 FPS selfie video recording, which is even better if you ask me, thanks to the silky smooth frame rates. And we do have ultra wide selfie recording, though capped at 1080p and 30 FPS, this cannot do 4K or 60 FPS. Recording at night with the ultra wide selfie does not look the best at all, but we do have those spotlights. So popping those on looks a lot better. This is a completely, completely blacked out room over here and recording with the main selfie. I don't know, it does some weird glitch with my head because this is recording 1080p at 60 FPS. When we switch over to spotlight mode, the head bobbing disappears, but it is capping at 30 FPS and 4K 30 FPS at night looks okay. So no head bobbing because of the frames per second count over here. But as soon as we pop the spotlights on again, once again, we get dropped down to 1080p 30 FPS. So you can only use spotlight video recording at 1080p 30 FPS with the selfie cam, which is a bit of a bummer. I'm sure something that can be fixed with future software updates. Selfies in that same pitch black room using the main camera with night mode off look great with night mode on even better they look pretty darn fantastic spotlights on and bokeh on looks absolutely phenomenal though some edge detection flaws over there night mode off and on with the ultra wide sensor looks weird and I do have beautify mode off on all of these shots but it seems to still be adding it in but not for the bokeh very strange over there and taking selfies in a dim lit situation that is not completely blacked out does an even better job over here as you can see with some slight lights hitting my face over here it does an incredible job in terms of edge detection when in bokeh mode as well as just general photos using the ultra wide selfie camera over here though the beautify mode still seems to pop in over here for some very weird reason I did triple check this to make sure it was off hopefully something that gets fixed with a future software update. The selfies are probably the best thing about this phone and probably the best selfies I've ever seen on any phone period. And powering on the device over here, we do have an always on display as well as an under display fingerprint sensor that is indeed optical. And we do have 2D face unlock. You can use any selfie camera. You can actually cover one and it uses the other one, but unfortunately no 3D facial recognition over here, despite having a notch at the top of the display. Speaking of that display, yes, it is notched, which may or may not be your cup of tea. It is a 6.44 inch AMOLED panel with an aspect ratio of 20 by nine. It is full HD plus it has a max brightness of 629 nits which is not necessarily the brightest and it has a refresh rate of 90 hertz and 180 hertz touch sampling rate. The refresh rate is unfortunately not adaptive or dynamic so when it's sitting at 90 it's sitting at 90 and when it's sitting at 60 it's sitting at 60. It does have smart switch where it can switch between 60 and 90 which is great and we do have fun touch OS 12 skinned over Android 12 right out the box. The software itself is very simplistic, easy to use. It's not quite stock Android. It has quite a few little nifty customization options and a new style for widgets over here, as well as of course, all Google services, Google Discover on the left-hand side and Google Assistant. The V23 is packed with up to 12 gigs of RPDDR4X RAM, though we do have extended RAM over here, bringing it up to a total of 16 gigs of RAM. Powering the device is the new six nanometer Dimensity 920 5G octa-core CPU 
CPU and when powering through Antutu version 9 yielded a score of 483,934 points. Of course we can also game on the Vivo V23 5G and we also have an ultra game mode overlay over here in order to trigger on something such as performance mode. Playing a game at 90 FPS feels nice and buttery smooth and we're getting frame rates between 82 and 91 FPS which is fantastic for a mid-range device. But what about audio, since the device is only kitted with one downward firing speaker? Nevertheless, let's go ahead and give it a listen. The Vivo V23 5G has completely changed the game of premium mid-range smartphones thanks to its rock-hard aerospace aluminum frame, light and simplistic software experience packed with Android 12 out the box, and most importantly, its beyond impressive dual selfie camera system packed with two dual-tone LED spotlights that work surprisingly well in dimly lit situations when taking photos. But for some strange reason, video is capped at 1080p 30fps when using said spotlights. That being said, a selfie video in general looks incredible thanks to its 4K recording capability. The AMOLED display is well sized and full of color, but is not the brightest around, and due to the couple of selfie sensors, there is a small notch at the top of the display which may or may not be to your liking. Another possible deal breaker is the lack of a dual speaker setup, which most phones include at this price point. One thing the V23 excels at however is its quality build and of course its head turning design thanks to its fluorite anti-glare glass backplate that not only shifts color at different angles but completely changes color under ultraviolet light. It takes more than decent photos and videos with its triple back camera setup despite having a slightly outdated main sensor and subpar ultra wide camera and boasts a large 4200 milliamp hour battery, fast 44 watt flash charging while performing Dimensity 9 20 CPU that can reach 90 FPS when gaming and even packs in 5G, which makes it easy for me to recommend the Vivo V23, not only because it has almost everything you could possibly want at this price point, but because it goes above and beyond to bring you a feature packed, quality built, premium mid-range smartphone.